Now we're going to talk about geometrical optics. This is a little strange. In a physics class about waves and optics, you would think we'd spend a lot of time on lenses and light going into lenses and making images with lenses and negative lenses and positive lenses and mirrors and sh curved mirrors and all this stuff. We actually aren't because you describe all that with geometrical optics and the reason it's called geometrical optics is it's really not physics, it's really geometry. So we are gonna spend a week on geometrical optics and some ideas behind geometrical optics, but I'm really gonna focus more on giving you insights into why it works and less on some giant optical train, okay? So let's start by pointing out the first interesting insight is that basically all of geometrical optics boils down to two laws. You can do everything with two laws, and those laws center around this thing we had before where you have light in one medium, in one, and light hits an uh, interface to another medium, in two, and we know the light comes in some angle to the normal, call it theta one, and it reflects, and some of it is transmitted into N2. So the way I've drawn it here, N2 has a higher index than N1 because the light sort of fell towards the normal. So this is theta two. So the two laws, it all boils down to two laws. One is the law of reflection. And that is that the incident angle equals the reflected angle. So if we're going to draw that here, we would just point out this also will be theta 1. If you come in at some angle of incidence, it's equal to the angle of reflection. And the second law is Snell's law. And I'll put the whole name together, Snell's law of refraction, also just called the law of refraction. And we did this when we did um, Fresnel's equations, and it is that the ratio of the sines, sine, well, one way to write it is N1 sine theta 1 equals N2 sine theta 2. So believe it or not, when you see a complicated optical train and all the ray tracing, all this stuff, it's really just doing those two things. That's pretty much all you need to do all of geometrical optics. So we're going to think about physically how to think about light in this way, where these laws come from, how you can use them, other different ways to, to derive why a thin lens does what it does. That's what we're going to focus on. And we'll do a little bit of image formation.